Welcome to Module 7. This module has us exploring cost, volume, profit analysis, CVP analysis, or I like to call it break-even analysis. When I think of management accounting, teaching the course, I love this chapter. I think it is one of the most useful chapters in the whole course. And the reason it's useful is because the concepts are fairly simple, fairly straightforward, but they're very, very powerful, particularly when you're planning a business, you're, you're sort of in the foundation stage, or when your business is doing something, you're thinking of exploring some new line. CVP analysis, I find to be so useful as a sniff test. Is this a good idea or does this idea stink? That's what CVP analysis will help us to determine. So I had a friend and she was thinking of starting an Airbnb type of business, right? She was thinking, okay, I can obtain a relatively cheap property and rent it on Airbnb. And of course do the maintenance work and, and all the things that go with running an Airbnb. And maybe I can turn it into a business. I can make a little bit of money at it. And so, uh, I, she came to me cause I'm a CPA and lots of people in there interested in business will approach their friends that are CPAs or, or financial professionals and just ask their advice. And she asked mine and I immediately thought, okay, this Airbnb idea is an interesting idea and it's one we need some numbers on to uh, crunch. And she uh, hadn't studied a management accounting class. So I wanted her to, just like we learned in the previous chapter, I wanted to break down her cost into fixed and variable components to determine how good or bad an idea this was. And so the first thing I asked her actually wasn't about cost. It was about revenues. I said, well, what do you think you can charge per night for this sort of small, it wasn't really a house. It was more of a, like, um, apartment type of thing was well, what do you think you can charge what's the market rate for one of these apartments and she said she thought she could charge 150 dollars. so that would be her sales revenue per customer 150 dollars. and i said great uh what do you think your variable costs are and of course variable costs are things like the airbnb fee that you pay as the seller on each uh, transaction. Maybe there's some credit card processing fees in there. She was planning to put a little care package together for her clients. There's also cleaning fees, all sorts of things like that. That would be variable. You know, the more customers you have, the more Airbnb charges and the more uh, cleaning fees you have, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And she said around $50. Again, we're doing back of the napkin math. We're doing estimates. And in this phase of the game, it's totally okay to do estimates. So her variable expenses, she estimates to be around $50 per customer. The other big number I needed from her was her fixed costs. So she pays uh, property tax. She was going to be the owner of this place. Maybe there's mortgage interest, which although it changes over time is fixed in relation to the number of customers. Doesn't matter if you have one customer or a hundred customers, your mortgage interest is the same. The mortgage company doesn't track with the number of customers. Um, and we went down the line of, of various fixed costs that she would have uh, for owning a place like this, her, her strata fee, it's called uh, HOA, right? Uh, fees for owning an apartment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it was expensive, right? This was a fairly nice apartment and it was an expensive mortgage, big mortgage interest it's, and so on. And so her um, fixed expenses on this unit worth uh, $2,000, pardon me, $2,000 was what we, again, this is all back of the napkin math. We're making our best judgment. We're being a little conservative because again, she's starting something new. There's probably hidden costs we hadn't considered. So we padded these out to make them a little bit uh, more risk averse than you, you might think, right? We were under estimating the sales revenue and maybe overestimating the expenses. But you know, we were being very conservative here because again, this is an idea and we want to know how good an idea it is. So at this point, if you can figure out your business or your proposed businesses, selling price of the product, the variable expenses associated with serving your customers and the fixed expenses, either monthly or annually of running the business. Now this was per month to be clear. Um, then you've got something here and this is all we needed to really get going and give her some powerful information. The first thing we determined was something called the break even point for her company. So how many nights per month did she need to rent out the place in order to break even? And 
you can eyeball this and maybe figure that out. Just looking at these numbers without any formulas, you can eyeball this and maybe you're piecing up together a number. But I'll show you how, and I'll show you how with some accounting formulas we'll be using this chapter. An important concept is the something called the contribution margin, CM. And we'll call it CM per unit in this case because her selling price per unit is $150. Her variable expenses per unit are $50. So every customer that comes in contributes $100 to her bottom line. $150 minus 50 equals 100. That is her CM per unit. I can see I'm behind my head there. Her CM per unit is $100 per unit. So anytime she has a new customer, it helps her profitability out by $100. That's the CM per unit. So how many customers does she need to break even? If her costs are 2000 bucks a month, you go break even in units is fixed expenses divided by CM per unit. In this case, our fixed expenses were $2,000. Our CM per unit, $100, $2,000 per month, our CM per unit was $100 per unit, $100 per you know guest night in this case for her Airbnb business. 2,000 divided by 100 means 20 nights per month. And so I we crunched her numbers and I said, okay, if you think you can rent this place for 20 nights a month on average, you will be breaking even. And she said, you know, I actually think I can. Hotel occupancies are higher than that around here. And I, I think absolutely I can rent for $20 or 20 nights a month. And I thought, well, that's good news. And that passes the first part of the sniff test. But remember what break even means. Now I haven't introduced it to you, but I had to her and I said, well, remember what break even means. Break even is the point at which you make zero profit. You're not losing money, but you're not making money. And I said, I don't think she started this business to be a charity, right? She didn't do it to break even. She wanted to make a profit. And so uh, I, said, I asked her, like, how much money would you like to be making every month from this endeavor? And she sort of said, well, you know, eventually I'd like maybe I, I have to invest in more properties, but I'd, I'd like this to be my full-time job. So, you know, off of one property, I'd maybe like to make $1,500 a month. So her target profit per property, because she's taking some risk here, right? She has a mortgage now. Uh, if she doesn't get enough customers, she loses money. So she, she's in it to make some money. She wants to make $1,500 per month. Okay, we've got a new break even to do. To calculate the, the break even at the target profit, how, how many sales to make the target profit, her new target sales, this is pre-tax, this is not considering tax. We'll consider income tax in future videos here, but this one just assume no income tax. This, again, we're doing back of the napkin math. We would say, okay, it's the target profit plus fixed expenses all divided by CM per unit. So our target profit for my friend was $1,500 plus 2,000 or fixed expenses all divided by 100. And again, 1,000 plus 1,500 plus 2,000 we do first, so it's 3,500 over 100. To make her target profit, she needs to sell, rent out her place for 35 nights per month. Now, immediately, we both realize this does not pass the sniff test. I hope you're seeing why. There are 35 nights in a month. She'd have to rent at 120% of capacity to make her goal happen. And so at that point, we had to revisit some of the underlying assumptions, right? She had to say, okay, maybe I need to price higher. 
maybe I need to reduce some of the amenities that I'm providing for my variable expenses or cut costs in some way. Maybe my fixed costs I need to revisit. Maybe I need to invest in a cheaper property that will have lower fixed costs or lower fees associated with owning that property. But something about this idea tells me if I keep my business model as it presently is configured, I'm going to have a hard time to break even. It'll be close, but I, she thought she would break even, but I'm never going to hit my target. And that's the point of this, right? The point of this for her was to make a little bit of money and it wasn't going to do it for her. So she ended up backing away from that and she did invest in a different property and she seems to be doing well. Now I haven't really followed up that much with her, but I think this is such a useful tool because again, we used three numbers, right? Sales, variable expenses, and fixed expenses. These were estimates, but we did some very powerful useful things. And that's what you're going to be learning this chapter is just a few simple numbers that you have to, you know, estimate or come up with for your business. We've learned how to come up with many of them last chapter. Uh, use those numbers to make some powerful and useful decisions for your business. I can't wait to get started. That's all for this video. See you soon.